Hi, so today we're going to be learning about module B1, understanding ourselves. You get to join me on my biology revision for my GCSE and I'm, I hope you can benefit as much as I'm going to and I'm definitely going to benefit because I'm going to read this whole book, which is great. So let's get started. Healthy is not the same as being fit. Healthy is being free of any infectious diseases, whilst fit is a measure of how well you can perform physical tasks. That includes running, great picture of running there, which you cannot see because I'm great at this filming. Okay, so to be fit, you get to measure stamina, speed, agility and flexibility. Next we're going to be talking about blood. Blood is pumped around the body when it's under pressure. Here you have the brain, the lungs, the heart, the liver, the gut and the kidneys. Blood is pumped around the body by the contractions of the heart, which increase the pressure. It comes for the red side, which is arteries. The blood leaves the heart and it travels up to the brain. It travels down, all the way down to the lower limbs. It travels to the liver and the gut and the kidneys. And then we have the blue side. So when it gets to some of the um, organs, for example the brain, that the blood leaves the heart and flows through the arteries, and then it splits into tiny capillaries which take blood to every cell in the body. The blood then flows back to the heart through veins and then the pressure gets lower. Okay, so it comes out the brain, now it's blue, which is cool. And then it can go back to the heart or to the lungs. And then when it goes to the kidneys it also changes. So, you can go into the liver, up here, etc. Um, and on the heart, we have some labels, which are fun. We have a bit here, a bit here. We have four parts. We have the aorta, which it, that's the way it travels out of the heart, and the pulmonary, yeah, pulmonary vein. We also have the vena cava, which is here and the pulmonary vein, no artery, that one's the vein, that one's the vein. So we have the pulmonary artery, there we go, great. So when the heart contracts, the blood pressure is at its highest, which is systolic pressure. Systolic is when it's really high. And when it relaxes, the pressure is really low. So this is diastolic, we'll say 135, because that's the systolic pressure, over 80 which is the diastolic pressure, and that's what it should be. We're on high blood pressure and heart disease. That does say heart, I know. Okay, things that can increase blood pressure. Number one is carbon monoxide. This combines with the haemoglobin in red blood cells, which reduces the amount of oxygen they can carry. To make up for this, the heart rate increases, so it contracts more frequently, and this increases the blood pressure. Another thing that can increase blood pressure is the nicotine from smoking. Oh, that carbon monoxide was from smoking. Another thing is the nicotine, which makes the heart just contract more often, which increases the blood pressure too. Um, something that can lead to heart disease is a poor diet. So for example, lots of fatty food. This is a picture of fat, apparently. Um, or if you've seen Doctor Who, this is a little adipose. That doesn't help, it doesn't look like an adipose. But sure, Doctor Who. Um, so any any disease that affects the heart is known as heart disease, which includes things like heart attacks. Um, and if your diet is high in saturated fat or salt, you may be more at risk at developing heart disease. Apparently, so no McDonald's. Bad. Okay, saturated fats can cause a buildup of cholesterol, which is a fatty substance. So if you have this is an artery. It is an artery. Yep. And this is some um, cholesterol, just here which is from your McDonald's. Um, you need some cholesterol for making cell membranes, but if you get too much, it builds up in the arteries, here, and it makes them narrower, which restricts the flow of blood and can lead to a heart attack, which is bad. 
Um, salt can also increase blood pressure because it also builds up plaques. It's the same way. If you get in the exam, it, you can just change it from saturated fats. Um, narrow arteries increase the risk of a heart attack by the blood flow to the heart being restricted and the heart muscle receiving less oxygen. Um, a thrombosis, which is also known as a blood clot, that also restricts blood flow. Um, and that is how a heart attack is caused. Next section, eating healthily. A balanced diet supplies all your essential nutrients. Oh, I haven't changed my piece of paper yet. Let me take that one off. And replace it with this one. So the balanced diet supplies, supplies all your essential nutrients. I will bring you to the table. Bring you to the table. I'll show you the table because it's easier than drawing it, and you might actually be able to read it. First one: carbohydrates, for example, glucose, provide the energy. Fats: they also provide the energy and act as an energy store, providing insulation. Proteins are needed for growth and repair of tissue, and to provide energy in emergencies. Vitamins and minerals, for example, vitamin C is needed to prevent scurvy and iron is needed to make haemoglobin for healthy blood, which is why you don't smoke because that takes the haemoglobin out of the blood. The oxygen has to put something out of the blood. Okay, I'm great at this. Water is to prevent dehydration. So, carbohydrates are made of simple sugars like glucose and they are stored in the liver as glycogen or converted to fats. Fats are made up of fatty acids and glycerol. I'm sorry, I'm writing on my wall, but my handwriting is terrible, but it isn't usually. Okay, so these can be stored under the skin, around organs, or as adipose tissue. Back to my great drawing of an adipose, yeah, okay, that's just nothing. Ign ignore that, just completely wrap that out, yeah, okay. Um, and finally, proteins are made up of amino acids, and they don't get stored. Not stored. Okay, um, there are things called first class proteins, so all the posh people get on first class. And they are the ones that are from animals. Um, so animal proteins are called first class, and second class is plant proteins. The amount of food that you need varies between people. So for example, children and teenagers need protein for growth, so they need the amino acids, because we need to grow. Um, whereas older people need more calcium to prevent or protect against degenerative bone diseases. So, here is a picture of a bone to help you remember. Yay! Definitely a bone. Um, for example, and females need more iron to replace the iron lost in menstrual blood. Great. And more active people need more protein for their muscle development and more carbohydrates here, for their energy. Some people choose to eat a different diet. For example, Hindus don't eat cows because they believe they're sacred. Um, vegetarians don't eat meat. Um, for example, cruelty, um, something like the taste, something that's healthier, and something that's trendy. Diet problems. Eating too little protein can cause problems, which is this, which we need to spell. K W A S H I O R K O R. Quash your core. Quash your core. Um, and a common symptom is a swollen stomach. Yeah, feet. And this happens more in developing countries because of overpopulation and there isn't a lot of money to invest in agriculture, so it's difficult to provide many proteins for everyone. We need to calculate the person's estimated average daily requirement, which is their EAR, using this equation. Their EAR in grams is 0 0.6 times body mass in kilograms. There is another equation we need to know, which is body mass index, which is our BMI, which is equal to body mass in kilograms over height squared. And if it's below 18.5, you're underweight. 18.5 to 24.9 is normal. 25 to 29.9 is overweight. 30 to 40 is moderately obese, and above 40 is severely obese. And you need to sort of roughly know where um, a person is with that. Okay, our next section is infectious diseases. Yay! And they are caused by. Where's my pen? There's my pen. Pathogens. You still can't read it. It says pathogens. Okay, I wrote it there as well. It is pathogen. Uh, okay. It is pathogens. You'll remember that. Okay. And these are 
microorganisms, I have no idea what that is, microorganisms that cause disease. Okay, and there are four types. Fungi, like mushrooms. For example, athlete's foot. There's also bacteria, for example, cholera. Next one is viruses. I'm sure we've all experienced some lovely viruses. And protozoa, oh, for example, flu. And finally, protozoa, which, for example, is dysentery. Okay, an example of disease, which we need to know, is malaria, which we know is caused or carried by mosquitoes. This is a great picture of mosquito. There they are, mosquito. Okay, it's called by a protozoa, um, carried by mosquitoes, that feeds on the blood of animals. How lovely is that? Um, it's a parasite, which is an organism that lives off another organism called a host, and it often causes it harm. They are vectors, which means that they carry the disease without getting it themselves. So they pick up the disease, here you go, in your shopping bag, pick up the disease, but they don't actually get it themselves. There we go, another great diagram. Okay, so to reduce spread of infection, you can spray insecticides. Um, to eat mosqui mos mosquito, <laughs> mosquito larva, you can introduce fish into the water, and you can also use mosquito nets. Okay, so how to deal with pathogens? This is down to your white blood cells. Once they enter your body, they'll reproduce rapidly until they're destroyed. So there'll be two, then three, then six, then twelve, until they're destroyed. And you can't see the diagram again. There is the diagram. Okay, 